Hi all, Susan Gerbeck here from Psychics Explained. I'm going to share with you two articles written by Ben Bradford. Um, this is a friend of mine. He is a prolific writer. He does a lot of investigative pieces. He's written many books. Um, he does tend to focus on paranormal things, cryptozoology, um, ghosts, all that kind of things. But he's also done some really interesting work on media literacy and all, you know, all kinds of, all kinds of things. He's very prolific and varied. Um, I find his work fascinating. He's very detailed and he's an easy reader. I mean, you could read his, his uh, content and enjoy it and, and disseminate the information in there. You know, it's not like it's super scholarly and you have to, you know, look up big words and things like that. All right. So he writes for Skeptical Inquirer. Well, he writes for many places in the past, but him and I both write for Skeptical Inquirer. So I want to show you these two articles. We'll go over them kind of briefly. Um, I'll give you the I'll give you the what's what's kind of going on in them, but I really do encourage you to read these both thoroughly and subscribe to his uh, his uh, different places where he writes because I think he does fabulous work and I think you'll find a lot of it interesting. Ben Radford. Okay, the first article I'm going to talk about is from Skeptical Inquirer. It was actually printed in the magazine and there is a magazine <clears throat> and actually a print magazine that I subscribe to. And Skeptical Inquirer, this isn't the magazine that has this issue in it, is Bigfoot Dead. That's actually another one of his articles on Bigfoot. But um, volume 45, number two, it's the March-April edition in 2021. And we're going to talk about psychic detectives. Now, one of the things that Ben has done, and he's done this many times, but I'm going to share two different cases, is that when there's a disappearance of a person and it hits the media um for good or bad the media reacts a lot of publicity um which could be great or it could be horrible and um victimizing the family with social media oh my gosh these people are inundated with cruel cruel things as well as people reaching out and saying, you know, how much they sympathize with them and, and so on. But there's a lot of cruelty that goes on, blaming the family for whatever's happened. It's really awful. Um, on top of the fact that your family member that you love is gone, is disappeared, missing. You don't even know what's going on. So if psychics could find missing people, they would find missing people. Not only for the fame, not only for the good of society, but also for the money. And I'm not talking about being paid by the families. Just think about what it would be, how much of a cost savings that would be to society as a whole if we were able to eliminate um, teams of people trying to search for people and forensic labs and the police trying to, to do their job interviewing suspects and interviewing people who might have seen them and witnessing. And if they could just go to a psychic who would, what, whatever they do, light some incense, have a dream, uh, put a pendulum over the top of a map, or <laughs> none of it works, you guys. But if they could do that, then you would just hire one person and not all these scores of teams of people. Just imagine the cost savings. <clears throat> I mean, they could even do it, I suppose, privately if they didn't want the fame and if they didn't really want the money, they could give the money somewhere else or just do it for the betterment of society. But they don't. And Ben has pointed this out multiple times in his articles. One of the ways he's doing this, and I think this is brilliant, is he watches a case that is happening in real time. You know, there's no solution. We don't know where the missing person is. And then he follows it and he sees and documents all the different psychics who are saying 
that they have solved the case or they know where the person is or they have hints or ideas and then the case is solved because the person's found and then you're able to go back and look and see did any of the psychics get it right so that's some of the things that people like ben radford does and it's it's a brilliant way of looking at do psychics work is there any benefit to these people who latch on to um, this crime or missing person it's not always a crime okay first article <clears throat> this is and like i said i'm going to not go over it in too much depth let's just run through it i'm hoping you're going to want to read the article this is psychic detectives and the tragedy of harley dilly young 14 year old well young 14 year old is redundant right 14 year old boy saw he goes to school um, on his way to school, he disappears, doesn't show up. The family calls a day later to the police because they thought it was likely he had um, gone to his friend's house. That was something he had done. Um, there's a camera showing him leaving his home at six in the morning to go to school, which he did. They could see him crossing the street. And that's the last that's ever seen of him. So... What happens is, and as as I said, let's let's look. This is, happens in Port Clinton, Ohio, which is six hundred people, I think they said, or six thousand people. Very small community, six thousand people. About six thousand people in this community in Ohio. I think this happened in two thousand nineteen, and you know they sort of sent out search dogs and there's and search teams, and they interviewed all of his friends and family and. <clears throat> media people start here comes the psychics um they come in and they all these different psychics latch onto it and they're the family and the police are inundated now the police can't ignore these kinds of um tips they have to follow through and it. so it's such a waste of the police time to be getting people's dreams and so on and the reason why they can't necessarily ignore it is because it's possible that somebody really did have information, but doesn't want to come forth with the information, um, you know, directly. And they'll say, I had a dream. I, you know, maybe they don't want their, their family member to be, they know their family member was involved, but they want to report it as a psychic um, thing instead of a, um, you know, come right out and saying, I know who's responsible. You know, there's just different reasons why they have to go through. We want police to go and look at every tip, right? It's expensive, but we we want a thorough investigation. Okay, so don't try to read this right now on my screen. Here, you're going to fail. Um, <clears throat> please look this article up. I will put it, a link to this article in the description of this video. Okay, here's the psychics. They're going through. They're they're giving all these claims. So Ben is going through and talking about all the different things that they're they're doing. This one said, um, "Okay, I feel that something having to do with information from Harley's science class or what he did during the half day around that class could help the police." Keep this in mind. I'm gonna tell you what ends up happening because we they figured out what happened to this this. Um, kid i picked up another vision of a white office building kind of up on a hill the office building looked like it had black windows so you could not see inside the building kind of like the windows they sometimes put in medical buildings the building was a big one and i saw the number 101 i felt like this is an office room number he went with a man i know this is true because i saw a vision of a man when i meditated on it again the man has a goatee and a lot of stubbles like he had not shaven. He was sort of a good looking male. And that is all I picked up as far as who Haley went with. I also saw a vision of some cement blocks of some kind, like four of them in the ground and kind of usually in that kind that are usually used near water. I did see a vision of a boat, but I don't think he's in water. I feel that someone who goes fishing or goes boating, though, this may also just be a vision of the search and rescue team. I, okay. And so 
how is this helpful? Um, 101, a tall building, a man with a goatee and stubble. How is that helpful in any way? Somebody who goes fishing, somebody in a boat, near water, cement, four cement blocks in the ground, the kind that are used near water. Is that helpful? No, that's not helpful. That's just, it's not at all. Um, here's another one. He's on a couch gasping for air. A Ford, gray Ford vehicle. My spirit guide said he took a half day off the day before and left during his science class. Oh, it's the same person. Same thing. Oh my gosh. And then there's some guy who does visions, I guess, and he draws this out in some random dreamlike stuff. Like that's helpful. Um, and so she, the, the first psychic, I guess, endorses this other psychic, Brian Ladd. Um, here's Brian Ladd. He has a success rate. He's worked on hundreds of missing person cases since 2006 with, with a success rate of 45%. Really? Can we see any of those? Any of these successful? No, nothing. Okay. So there's sketches and here's, here's somebody who put up a map of where it would be. Um, just all right here is some of the sketches falsifiable claims merge that he has been abducted by a male the boy would not be found would be found or had been under a porch and would be located in or near the area where they indicated on a local map that he or his abductor or had some connection to walmart and perhaps more importantly the boy would be found safe okay i guess that's what ben has pulled together from all the stuff that he had found, especially from these two serious mediums who said that they really had the information. So that's basically what they found. So here's what actually happened. It took a month. They found him in the house across from his house. It was an, it was an old vacant house that had been, um, you know, locked up. And apparently what happens is he crosses the road. There's surveillance footage of him crossing the road from his house to the house across the street. And that's where the video ends. Well, what he did is he went into that house, but how he got into the house was he, he got up onto the roof. He got to the chimney. He took his glasses and his jacket off and he put him down into the chimney so that he was going to get inside they fell to the bottom onto the ground and then he climbed into the chimney and tried to get through and the chimney is wider it places and then it gets narrower and he died he suffocated in the chimney probably the same day maybe even hours after he left within an hour or two that's very dangerous to do so this 14 year old was trying to get into this house he was going to hide or he was going to rob it or he was just uh, being adventuresome or curiosity or we don't know. But that's how he decided he was going to get into the house and he died that way. And it took a month for them to find him. They they had search dogs, I guess, and they picked up scents. But then he was obviously in that area. He crossed the street and the house didn't look like it had been broken into. I guess they checked that out and it was vacant. So police didn't search the house because, I mean, why? There's no signs of entry. Nobody considered going into the chimney. Um, I guess they got in within a month for some other reason and found his jacket and glasses at the bottom of the chimney. And that's what happened to him. Horrible, tragic, um, senseless, probably accidental. I mean, if you're going to kill yourself, it wouldn't be that way. So it was accidental and no psychic predicted it. And these two specifically, these two psychics who said that they had all this information were completely wrong. I mean, completely wrong. Think about all the resources that are spent on this nonsense. Okay. Um, 
Oh, Ben talks to the police department in Port Clinton Police Department who were involved in the search. And he even names the detective as Ron Timmons. And none, no psychic tip led to what actually happened. The map that they released was like on the other side of town. And they, uh, oh, here's a picture of the house. You can see it whenever you look at the article. It is a large house. Oh my gosh, there's the chimney. It's a two-story house. So three-story house. So that would have been quite horrible. Okay, second article I want to share with you is a recent one that came out, which made me think, oh, I've got to share, I've got to talk about this. These are amazing articles, just amazing investigations that Ben has done. All right, I had barely heard of this. In the UK, it's massive. I'm here in the United States. I didn't really hear it. But so this woman is, um, here's, here's her name. I'm not going to really talk about it because I don't want to push it. It's just, that's not what this channel is about. Um, she is taking her dog for a walk. She's on the phone. She's on a um, business meeting, like a Zoom call. And the phone, the phone, um, she's on mute and her video is off. And she's out taking the dog for a walk by a river. And they find her phone still with the video, like she's still on this call, sitting on a park bench. And people are like, well, where's the person who owns this phone? You know, this is odd. And then her family reports are missing after a while. And they find out that she's gone, just vanished. The dog is wandering around with its leash on and she's nowhere to be found. Her phone is sitting there active, you know, on a video call with her work and that's it disappeared this is a recent 2023 okay another case that ben has looked at it's um tragic and sad and there is an answer but as in what ben was able to do is he was able to look at here it is we don't know what's going on we have no clue and then you look at what happens the media reaction he calls it a media circus and it absolutely is the the uk went just bizarrely nuts with this and not only the media but people who, like on instagram and and um social media they were going to the site and taking pictures of themselves you know what is it called tragedy voyeurism um tourism where you go out of your way to go look for something, go look to be at that spot where this tragedy occurred, you know, just exploiting that that tragedy even further. I don't know what's wrong with people, but okay, whatever. Um, they they were going there and then they were doing investigations, trying to say they could find the person and so on. It was gosh, media circus. The family came under a whole bunch of problems. I mean, everybody's life who was associated with this woman, they're, they're um, investigated by the social media juggernauts who, who were trying to make their dollar off of, off of this tragic circumstances. And <laughs> talk about grief vampires. And they um, just, you know, social media and blaming them and saying they had something to do with it. And, and Oh, it was awful just awful these poor people so here comes the psychics on youtube and tiktok and all over the facebook and all the socials they're saying they have clues and they can figure it out and oh, just using it to make a buck right i don't care if these people think they can really find her i don't think i don't care if these people think they're psychic don't do this people don't do this this is just really wrong here's here's one um card decks tarot here's an, another one i'm a psychic i hope she's still alive well why don't you know can't you tell that's like alive or not live it seems like 
that would be kind of okay first thing uh this one says last night i got some pretty intense connections with nicola when i got out my crystals and did all my saging and then sat there looking at her photo i pulled in her energy and i can tell you everything she told me because a lot of it was personal information this does not mean she's passed through psychic abilities i got a lot to the story really you're in contact with her she's talking to you about her personal information lady i think you're not right i think you need the you need help but really think about this here it says her dog there was a metal gate with either green or red really that's helpful um they've some of my clients have sent me images and there's a gate i think it's the gate the dog is talking about wait what a dog is talking about her dog is talking to you it's green with moss so i'm sure that's the gate the dog was talking about there's a blue van the dog definitely showed me a blue van can wait can dogs see color because i didn't think dogs could see color somebody put it on google earth and apparently there was a blue van in the field in the area i don't suggest anyone goes in the van because it's on private property but maybe they could speak to whoever owns the field that might be really useful again you don't know what the hell you're talking about and now people are going to go to the owner of a field that is nearby on google maps to who has a blue van in the photo and that they're going to be knocking on these people's door or trying to approach them on social media to get to ask them to open up their blue van or have the police go to the blue van i mean it's dumb it's cruel these are people who are not have anything to do with it and here you've got oh all right the hat the beige brown bubble hat the beige brown bubble hat now some people sent me pictures of the lady herself wearing the hat but also the husband wearing the hat now i don't want to start anything like it must be the husband and the feeling in the shoulder area someone could have said it could have been a taser that was used oh maybe i'm going to turn off the comments in this video because the crazy comments people write when they don't understand just makes me laugh how wild can people be hope this is useful hope you're having a good day and nicola go home she this psychic wants to turn off the comments on her own feed because they're too crazy but yet this woman is talking about a hat and a a van and a shoulder really people come on now um here it is i feel like she came came into contact with someone a male possibly too and it was money a robbery i'd be curious if she had any money on her and if that money went missing i feel like the persons that that helped contribute putting her in that water near the bush knew the surrounding and knew her routines i don't get that there was a sexual motive necessary it feels more like a robbery and a quick robbery hit over the head she went into the water it could be an accident but i'm not getting it it was money something to do with money it does not feel like she knew this person very helpful not oh so then they finally find her right and according to the world health organization drowning is the third leading cause of international unintentional injury death making up seven percent of all injury related deaths globally there's nothing suspicious about a woman walking alone falling into cold water and drowning due to water shock um, falling into cold water can cause a person to gasp and inhale water and drown in seconds with and then ben makes the point that a lot of these people when you drown it's not necessarily a loud splashing people shouting kind of thing it can be a very quiet uh, people go under and that's it and there's nobody else around so nobody was able to help her all right so they did find her body i think it was a dog walker somebody walking their dog farther along the stream her body had been found snagged on um, something 
much farther down the stream and they weren't able to find her because she could for reasons you know she could have been underwater she, who knows so um i'm gonna go down here to the end oops this part right here all right Psychic detectives and an army of laptop sleuths and true crime aficionados compounded the tragedy. Instead of respecting the family's wishes or letting the police do their jobs, they clamored over each other to get a piece of the action. As the BBC reported, the family still received negative targeted messages on social media, as well as seeing wildly inaccurate speculation on a number of platforms months after her death. The family urged the public to look at the facts, the evidence that has been heard during the inquest and the conclusion reached by the coroner and ignore any amateur views and opinions. Be mindful of, of the impact words bring. The last few months have been extremely tough to process for our family. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. My gosh, you guys, leave these people alone. <clears throat> Let the police do their work. If you have any legitimate non-dream related insight okay but let the police do their their job again let me emphasize this if a psychic medium a psychic or a medium if they could solve a crime if they could find a missing person they would have already done so and they have it. And the reason why is because they don't have these special powers. They don't have, they cannot communicate with animals or the dead or flowers or bugs or whatever it is they say they can do. You can't do that. It's not possible. There's never, ever been one case solved let alone lots of cases solved. They claim it. They claim they solve cases. They claim they help. They're not helping. They're wasting time. They're just continuing to breed off of these families. I hear people say, they don't charge money. I never charge money for this. Well, yeah. Why would you bother charging money to the family? If you solve the crime or if you're claiming to have solved the crime by throwing out a bunch of just nonsense that maybe something sticks, then you are you can write your own ticket. TV shows, money thrown at you, everything. Because you're attaching yourself to their grief. You're attaching yourself to their, um, to their tragedy. So it's not about the money in that case. It's about actually making yourself into some powerful thing and that's what happens a lot of times they throw out so much information like in the other case with the 14 year old boy where the psychic says i see the number 101 in an office building and tall buildings with mirror like you know you can't look at dark windows you can't look into like in a business park they're in a town of six thousand. <laughs> come on but let's say something did hit let's say the number 101 really did appear in when they solved the case. Maybe the house number of the, uh, of the place he was actually found was 101. It wasn't, but let's just say that's not helpful. It really isn't because you're not saying the house across the street, house number 101. You're just saying 101. That's a highway. That's a lot of things are 101. It's not really helping, but let's say that it did. that psycho would have a lot of fame. So um, I'd, I'm curious what other people think. I will put these articles, two articles. And as I said, you should follow him on all the places you can follow people to learn about more they've read. You can look on Skeptical Inquirer. In fact, I will put a link in there that says Skeptical Inquirer and it'll have um, Ben Radford as an author and you can go and you can look at some of the other articles. They're quite diverse very interesting, well-researched, well thought out and um, readable, very, very readable.
So check those out.